said, talk about this experience, man. Obviously, being back here is pretty cool, but uh, just talk about going through this and something I know you dreamed about. Uh, 100%. So, uh, it's a little different for sure. Uh, definitely grateful for the opportunity that we've been given uh, to come out here and showcase our abilities with our teammates. But uh, it's different to be in this indoor facility and uh, this time you're not putting on a practice jersey. So it's a little bit different, but uh, definitely an enjoyable experience and 100% uh, excited for myself and the guys that i played with for the past four years. What's some of the things that you wanted to sh kind of showcase to these scouts and teams? Uh, the biggest thing I kind of wanted to show one was my explosiveness and quickness at, at the center position, but also that I have the versatility to play guard as well. How do you feel like you did today? Just uh, I mean, I'll let those guys be the judge of how I did today, but uh, ultimately I didn't think I did anything to hurt myself, and that's the biggest thing. What have conversations been like with teams and who you talked to so far? Um, it's hard to say. Um, everybody kind of comes in spurts, and um, so I've talked to a plethora of different teams, but. Um, it's kind of hard to say who has the most interest or anything like that. What do you want them to know about Cedric Van Fran? Uh, the biggest thing I would like for them to know uh, when I get to organization, I'm coming to win. I'm really willing to play my role, uh, whether that's stepping in day one as a leader or that's supporting the leaders on the team, but my goal is to win. I asked Brock the same question. This whole process only comes around once for you guys. How do you make sure that you're staying present and that you're understanding that it's happening in real time? 100 percent. So uh, just to answer your question, I guess the biggest way to stay locked in uh, staying in the moment, I would say, uh, has to be counting your blessings for sure. I think a lot of times throughout this process, you can, I guess, drive yourself crazy, you know, worrying about the things you may not have or what this guy is saying or, you know, whatever. Um, but the biggest thing is making sure that you count your blessings for how far you have come through the grace of God. Said everybody talks about getting you on the board. They, they want to get you on the board and diagram. How, if teams throwing that at you and how quickly do you embrace doing that? That seems to be one of the things people talk about. 100%. doesn't bother me. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. So we can talk balls all day. How much of conversations with NFL teams been about playing center versus playing guard? Um, it, it mostly depends on the team. I've had some teams ask me specifically about guard. and. Um, some teams want to see me at center, so uh, at the end of the day, it's just about having versatility because in the NFL, sometimes they only travel seven offensive linemen, so uh, you have to be able to play both, well, all inside three positions. Since we haven't seen you as much at guard as center, what do you bring as a central guard at next level? Uh, well, that's hard to say because um, at the end of the day, you have to play in game for that. That wasn't my role here in Georgia. I did what I was asked to do for the team, um, so I guess we'll find out. Tate joked around, said he called you, said he needed help. Were, were you able to give him much help over the phone? What did you say? Tate joked around, said he called you, said he needed help. Were you able to give him much help over the phone? I'll say this uh, as far as Tate. The biggest thing I told Tate was just to be himself. Um, the best thing that he can do for himself is continue to be the person that he is. He's a great leader by example. He doesn't need to be Nolan Smith. You know, that's the biggest thing. So it's really just understanding that you're going to be the guy who leads by example and if you say things from here and there guys will respect it because you're not the one that's always um i guess being the vocal guy How jared being is it for tate and, and trust to be back for that offensive line and alongside those guys uh, who, who else might kind of step up as a leader on that group uh in your absence now uh so to answer your question i would say jared wilson probably will step up the most uh, along with ernest green but I think it's huge to have Tate and Trust back for the simple fact of once you get those young guys who are hungry, and Jared really isn't young, um, but he just hasn't had his opportunity to shine yet. So I would say once you get those kind of guys with guys who are experienced and have really seen it all through the league of the SEC, um, I think the sky's the limit for those guys. What, what does Jared bring to the table? Tate called him a freak athlete. Yeah, uh, exactly what Tate said. Uh, Jared is a freak athlete. Uh, explosiveness. He, one thing that I think people underestimate about Jared is that he's extremely smart. Um, Jared does a tremendous job of being able to dissect what the defense is giving him, being able to make those ID points, and uh, also just, I guess, digesting what's going on right in front of him in a split second. So once you add that, uh, understanding the offense and then how explosive and uh, good of an athlete he is, it's amazing what he can do. Said you have a lot of former teammates that are in the NFL now. What have they told you about the, ne the next level to help you out? Uh, so the biggest thing they told me uh, was, one, um, yes, the draft will be very emotional uh, for good reasons and bad reasons, but the biggest thing is, is getting over it as fast as possible. Once you get there, no one cares where you're drafted, no one cares whether uh, you know, you're a top guy, you're younger. If you can play football, you can play football. Um, and that was the biggest thing is just making sure that you can turn, kind of flip that switch um, and kind of get back into playing football. And then another thing that they said was uh, make sure you come in uh, the best shape as possible because it'll be a really, really long year for the rookies. With Jared, what is it about his athleticism?
Uh, you said, what is it about his athleticism? So, um, one, he's quick and he's fast. Uh, he can jump really high. Um, his lateral quickness is ridiculous. Uh, I'm trying not to say too much. You'll just have to see it for yourself. Is there anything ceremonial or some, uh, is there anything ceremonial or some kind of proper send off for you guys after this, or is it just a good riddance good riddance? <laughs> uh good riddance to the NFL. I wanted to get to you. Uh, sure. What will you miss the most about What will I miss the most? Uh I'll say uh I'll miss Coach Smart uh getting on us on the mic. Uh but I'll definitely miss my teammates. That's that's the biggest thing for me, and I think it'll be the hardest adjustment is kind of leaving these guys not necessarily behind, but not seeing them every day. Uh, the guys you've built these connections with, you know, spending time with outside of football. Uh, so it'd be hard to leave those guys behind. Thank you, sir.